All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove a very classical result about averages of sequences, which I'm sure it has lots of applications, but I don't know any application of this right now. And, but anyway, what it says is, if Sn is a sequence of non-negative numbers, and you define the average sigma n to be S1 plus S2 plus blah, 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 plus Sn over n, then what can we show is that if the sequence converges, so claim, if Sn converges to S, then the sequence of averages also converges. Converges to S. And it sounds like almost a very big law of large numbers in probability, and I also think that's very important in harmonic analysis. So that's all I know, but I do want to emphasize this is strict, so the converse doesn't hold. So if sigma n converges to S, this does not imply Sn converges to S. For instance, take Sn to be simply, sorry, not sigma n, take Sn to be the sequence minus 1 to the n. Then what is sigma n? Well, sigma n is just the average, so minus 1 plus 1, minus 1 plus 1, minus 1 plus 1, dot, 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 plus minus 1 to the n, over n. And here's the thing. So the average, either everything cancels out and we get 0, or um, there's a minus 1 left and we get minus 1. So it's either minus 1 or 0 over n, but as n goes to infinity, we get 0. So in that case, the average goes to 0, but Sn itself doesn't converge to S. Diverges in some sense. So that's very strict. That said, we can still show this. So, And in order to show this, we need to show the following identity that's very useful with lim soups and everything. So let's show that lim inf as n goes to infinity of Sn is less than or equal to the lim inf as n goes to infinity of sigma n, which is less than or equal to the lim soup as n goes to infinity of sigma n. is less than or equal, so if one has a little lemma, to the lim soup as n goes to infinity of s. Once we have shown that, then we're done. Here's why. Because if Sn, if Sn equals, goes to s, then the point is if the limiting of Sn exists, then it's equal to the lim inf and to the lim soup. So then S, which is the lim inf of Sn, is less or equal to the lim inf of sigma n, which is less or equal to the lim soup of sigma n, which is less or equal to the lim soup of Sn, which is just S. So in particular, what do we get? We get that. S is less than or equal to the lim inf of sigma n, which is less than or equal to the lim soup of sigma n, which is less than or equal to S. Therefore, this forces the lim inf of sigma n to be equal to the lim soup of sigma n. To be S. And that if the lim inf equals to the lim soup, which equals some number, by what I call the lim soup squeeze theorem, we actually get that sigma n must converge to S by lim soup. So the point is, all that's left to do is to show this identity. All right? And here's how we're going to show it. Well, I hope you agree that lim inf is less than or equal to lim soup. And also, the way we show this identity, it's similar to this identity. So, assume we've shown this as well. And therefore, all that's left to do is to show the following identity. 
All right, now what we want to show is that third inequality, namely that the limb soup as n goes to infinity of sigma n is less than or equal to the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn. And you'll see here we have to be a bit careful of what is bigger than what, what we want to let go to, go to infinity. So, fix capital N. This will be the capital N of that limb soup of Sn. Then, if M is bigger than capital N, so that M will be for that limb soup, what we want to do, we want to consider the supremum of sigma n, where n is bigger than m. So super careful about the hierarchy. Here we have capital N, then we have m, and then we add n. Okay, and now let's consider sigma n. That becomes s1 plus dot 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 plus sn over n. But now, notice, we can just split this up between S1 plus dot 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 plus Sm, and then plus, or even, even better, we can split it up between S1 plus S capital N, plus S capital N plus 1, up to Sn. And this divided by N, and this divided by N. Okay. Now here's the thing, again, capital N is fixed, so this is constant. And in particular, notice the other terms. So what do we have? We have this threshold, capital N. And then, what do we know about that soup? Well, the soup is bigger than all the values after that threshold. So if you want, this is the supremum of Sn where n is bigger than capital N. But the point is, all those values here are bigger than, are smaller than that threshold. Like this is Sn plus one, and that might be Sn. So the thing is, so this is, this is less than the soup, this is less than the soup, etc., etc. And the question, so in particular, all those terms are less than this soup, and the question is how many terms are there? Well, n minus capital N plus 1 plus 1, which is n minus capital N. So, sigma n then becomes S1 plus data plus Sn over n plus, uh, or if one less than or equal, to n minus n, n minus capital N, over n times the suprema of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N. But just one little thing, and you'll see why this will become important, because uh, first of all, this is less than or equal to 1. And again, ideally, we want this to be independent of n, but now notice our hierarchy. This is capital N, this is M, and this is N. So in particular, this thing is less than or equal to S1 plus S capital N over M plus the suprema of Sn over N bigger than capital N. Now, here's the thing. Here's the upshot. This whole thing, this whole thing is independent of n. So what we're saying is, for every n bigger than capital N, this thing is less than or equal to that constant. So now, just take the supremum, so the supremum of sigma n, where n is bigger than m, is less than or equal to s1, plus dot 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 plus s capital N over M plus the suprema of Sn over N bigger than capital N. And now again, here's where we have to be careful. First, let's let M go to infinity. So then what do we have? The limb soup of 
n goes to infinity of the sigma n, that becomes the limit as m goes to infinity of this suprema over n bigger than capital M. But then that becomes less than or equal Less than or equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of s1 plus dot 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 plus sn over n. And again, that's really analysis at its finest. We have to analyze which term uh, goes to what. Now, here's the thing. Again, this is constant and this is constant. And we want to let m go to infinity, so this thing actually goes to zero. So what do we get? And while this is constant, so in the end, we get that the limb soup as n goes to infinity of sigma n is less than or equal to the suprema of Sn, where n is greater than capital N. And again, notice how beautiful this is. We let something go to infinity, something becomes constant, and again, it seems like there's so many impasses but it's kind of we were able to twirl this through and go to the correct limit. Now, this is constant, and therefore, because this is greater or equal to this constant for all capital N, we can now let capital N go to infinity. And then we get that the limb soup of sigma N, of N goes to infinity, of sigma N is less than or equal to the limit as capital N goes to infinity of that suprema. But by definition, that's just the limb soup. And therefore, we have done. I had like eight tries to do this. I'm glad this got finally solved. All right, if you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.